What do you see to be the distinction between celebrity and fame? Well, I can be a boring classicist and go first on classics, yeah. if you like. Okay, so the root of uh, celebrity is actually somebody who is much thronged or frequented by other people. It doesn't mean fame in any sense at all. It means a go-to place. You calibrate it's the verb. You, you, you throng it. Fame endures, at least one likes to think it endures, <clears> there's <throat> a chance of enduring in a way that celebrity doesn't. Celebrity is, uh, you know, the usual metaphor is something like a bubble. And bubbles don't endure, they don't last. Mm. I think today maybe it has become increasingly problematic or, or difficult to distinguish fame from celebrity. As you, as you mentioned, celebrity is more ephemeral. If you want to be famous, it's to be remembered forever. But at the same time, we could say maybe um, today's celebrity's talent is to draw attention to draw the eyeballs from yeah. people. So it's a, maybe a different talent. For, for me, personally, celebrity, or at least how I use it in my work, is more or less an encompassing term, of which then fame is maybe one variant, but mm -hmm. altogether I think it's difficult to sometimes distinguish. Anne Frank was never a celebrity. Nobody had ever heard of her. You could have posthumous fame, and never yeah, have been yeah. a celebrity whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and there are Emily Dickinson, there are people yeah. who left manuscripts who, who were mm -hmm. not only uncelebrated but practically reclusive. Practically yeah. 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 Exactly, mm -hmm. and then, then yeah. they have become famous posthumously, mm -hmm. which goes to this point about, I just think celebrity is in the present tense. Yes, it's think. in a sort of continuous mm -hmm. present, but um, that, that is the real difference, and you really can disappear from celebrity magazines within a couple of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing that we've seen quite a lot of in the media recently is a certain amount of credence being given to celebrities. What do you think exactly is the dynamic at play there where people believe in what a celebrity says even though they're not famous for having particular knowledge in that area? One of the things I like to compare it with is the, um, the veneration that attaches to things belonging to celebrities. So for example, it's not just whether um, you know Donald Trump thinks that Andrew Wakefield is right about uh, childhood vaccination causing autism. It's that it's Donald Trump who says it, and the fact that he knows absolutely nothing about medicine um, somehow doesn't doesn't stop the dynamic. But that's a bit like you know if you sell Donald Trump's underpants at, auto, or at auction, they would fetch a much greater price than your or my underpants. This tasteful um, image. <laughs> <laughs> Deliberately. <laughs> and, uh, and it's always been thus, you know, Saints Bones. If you've got a reputation as, um, you know, having walked around after you're dead with your head cut off, then your bones are going to be worth a fortune to whichever church is lucky enough to, to house them. And I think one of the things that people in, in Britain don't necessarily understand about Trump is the extent to which his face was already in everybody's sitting room yeah. from mm -hmm. their version of the Apprentice uh, show. Apprentice, yes. And the Apprentice show is particularly, you know, yeah. venial because it sets up a figure of authority, it actually sets up a figure of authority, mm -hmm. the judge of people's business practice. Yeah. So it takes an extraordinary amount of acumen to, to distinguish between whether he's going to be good at fiscal finance. And I do like The Apprentice. I like Alan Sugar. I watch it. I find it amusing. But I think if Alan Sugar stood for, for Parliament, he used to support the Labour Party, mm -hmm. I actually think he would get Maybe. quite a lot of following yeah. as yeah. a result yes. of being the familiar face yes. who goes on yeah. and judges, judges yeah. stupidity. Would a celebrity as Trump be as successful in a country and political system as the UK? So probably no. And then it's, then it's interesting to see the, how the media are different and yeah. how also political systems, yeah. political parties function in very yeah. different ways. Of course, yeah. we don't have a presidential no. um, system here, but it's very interesting to, to look at these differences and to keep in mind the context. That's um, about capitalism, though, isn't it, partly? Mm -hmm. Because in America, they have had a long history of hero businessmen. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Britons just automatically admire people who've accumulated an awful lot of money no. in the same way that they actually do in America because it's the foundational dream, yeah. uh, just primitive <laughs> accumulation of, of, of capital and that, that's always, you know, yeah. we had levellers in, 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 in the yes. 17th century and I, I think it's just much more built in, I think people resent disparities in income much more than I, I feel when I go to the States. Yeah. What is interesting maybe is that when Jeremy Corbyn was elected as the leader of Labour that he immediately rejected the style of personalised politics. He said, I'm not going to speak about my private life. That's, that's not why I'm here. Um, 
So, in a sense, it's interesting because many of these arguments in the literature presented as though, or as if there's only an increase, it's, uh, there's only one way of doing politics today, you have to be a celebrity. Same with Trump, people are asking, yeah, would it be possible for a non-celebrity to become the president of the United States again? But I think there are still different ways of um, doing politics.